，有看到李卓然，不是吗？秉真，秉真，我看到你。Yeah, can you talk? Hi. Yeah, just say, just talk to us. Yeah. Ah, okay. Use, yeah. I can use my uh, uh, mobile, but I can't get it on the computer. I would rather if we use the computer, then I could see everybody more clearly. Well, we can, we can, we we can see you very clearly as well. Oh, no problem. Yeah. 但是可以用电脑让我可以上吗？电脑可以啊，电脑可以。我现在的电脑没有办法上。这个是手机，手机，所以我看看得很不清楚，很小。那我就希望能够用那个我的电脑可以上，但是刚刚 Emily 在帮忙，办法让我上电脑。那其实你可以就在电脑先打开你的那个啊、呃，那那那个 Cisco 的那个那个 software， 先打开了它，然后就把那个 conference 的那个。号码打进去，呃，你看打，你说用什么打开？你先打开那个那个呃 ，Webex， 就是 Cisco Webex 的那个 software。你先打开了你那个、uh, 啊。Webex， 我我们有 Webex 吗？有，以前都是一直在用这个 software， 以前的会议全部都是用这个 software 的。哦。This is going to be removed. The image is going to be clear. Skype 的右下角，这个 share screen 用这个。啊他已经在上线 requesting， 你看是，对，刚才用 mobile， 对，上线。需要等一下，不然。
Good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to International Conference on Cropping and Acupressure. We are glad to invite all of you to join this online conference. Now we will invite Professor Chen Xiaoxi to give us opening remarks. Let's welcome Professor Chen. Yeah, uh, my colleague, uh, welcome to this uh, international uh, meeting on cupping and occupations. Uh, I'm very great because on behalf of uh, our uh, cupping and occupation associations, you know, Dr. Xie and I, we work with these for at least, uh, you know, uh, many years. And uh, we never th we never thought that we can have uh, such kind of international meetings. But uh, today, you know, our our dream, you know, uh, will, will will come, you know, to uh, present uh, some topical in relation to the cupping and the acupressures. I have to say, you know, uh, this is the the most efforts is due to to our Dr. Xie, you know. Uh, she made a great contribution to uh, creating this uh, uh, cupping and acupressure association. And uh, so uh, uh, 
we have these opportunities, therefore, to hold this meeting with uh, international Asian uh, uh, screening members. I know you, you, I mean, some of them already on an, online, and uh, I'm sorry because we have some of the technical problem waiting for, you know, our, you know, professor to join as well. But uh, uh, I, I, I'm, I, I'm also uh, <clears throat> maybe happy to know our our member of the international cancer screening you know members join with this meeting and uh, uh, that's that's uh, one of the things you know we should be very proud of this uh, society as well and uh, also uh, i i have to say uh, from beginning uh, we want to invite the professor you know Tang Wei from germany Unfortunately, she, she she could not join with our meetings this time, and uh, we were we were invite him, you know, uh, uh, in the futures. And of course, most importantly, you know, I uh, this time we are invite to, in addition to our uh, <clears throat> our president of the uh, Doctor Xie Li, and I will introduce her later on. Uh, we also uh, uh, invite to Professor Lee, you know, the Zolan from uh, Singapore. Uh, I, I think, I think I, I, I'm in, you know, uh, in uh, through uh, Professor Xiong uh, because of the health, uh, because of humanities, you know, meeting, and also uh, uh, I know uh, he's an expert in the in the TCN, you know, as well. So uh, and. Uh, uh, he uh, actually uh, guides us uh, and advises so many things to uh, do uh, TCM, you know, uh, on the right track. I know, uh, I know he uh, he 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 would have, you know, had meeting in the, in the academic clinic year because of the COVID nineteen. So uh, uh, so that's why I invite him to uh, join with our online meeting uh, to. Uh, facilitate, you know, our uh, TCN, uh, which is one of the unique feature uh, in the, in the medicine in Asian country. So, uh, I'm I personally think, you know, uh, the uh, TCN play important role not only in. in uh, not only in uh, treating disease, but also in prevention medicine as well. That's why I, I devoted uh, myself to this field, which uh, uh, Dr. Xie and also learning from Dr. Xie for many years. That's why we work, you know, uh, since 2000, early 2000, until so far. And uh, we, uh, we have uh, this uh, association, you know, to, uh, to create. And also, I I also uh, want to uh, congratulation uh, to to have a congratulation on the uh, Dr. Xie because he also created a very uh, novel journal which is entitled as uh, a, a neo medicine you know journal instead of the we always say the alternative medicine. And um, so so uh, and and uh, because of that, uh, we can have uh, uh, several. Uh, young generation like the Dr. Xi Chen Yang and also Dr. Chen Yi Jin, you know, they are all doctors and uh, they are interested in uh, in devoting themselves, you know, to uh, studying the uh, cupping and acupressure uh, and uh, and also other, you know, TCM. So this is all the things, you know, uh, to explain uh, and account for by this meeting here. And I hope this meeting uh, is the is a it is a one of the uh, the, the guidance uh, for leading us uh, to uh, go to the TCM in the right way. Particularly, you know, right now we have uh, we are faced with uh, COVID nineteen pandemic. Although Taiwan has uh, a few cases, but uh, you know, uh, in the world they are still you know. Uh, uh, pandemical situation, and uh, TCM is also one of the uh, the uh, the solution to uh, the treating the uh, COVID nineteen disease as well. There are so many, you know, uh, uh, the research and also the uh, practice right now uh, 
proposed from Western country and also from Asian country to uh, use them uh, to improve, you know, the uh, the therapy and also the the treatment. So I, uh, <clears throat> on behalf of the uh, Carpenter and Occupational Association and also International Cancer Screening Network, and also uh, I know, you know, Professor Bin Zhengxiong also joined with ours, and he's so she's so important because he played important role in the president of the Asian the new healthy humanity in connection with the healthy humanity and also humanity in the world in w, in the in the in, in UNESCO, you know uh, organizations so uh, uh, uh welcome to uh, have this meeting and i wish you know uh, i uh, every audience you know and also uh, every participant in this online meeting can enjoy you know the following the lectures from uh, four speaker and I wish we have a success, you know, uh, this meeting uh, this evening. And uh, I know all the speakers from uh, are all the experts, uh, are all the, uh, uh, the uh, mother languages, the Chinese, but because we have a participant from, you know, the Asian countries, so we have to use the English all the way and uh, uh, in order to convey, you know, the message to them. Yeah. So um, thank you so much for attending this meeting again. And thank you. Thank you, Professor Chen. So now we are going to our first topic, uh, which is talking about chief based therapy principles and practice. We are invite Professor Chen to this section. Let's welcome Professor Chen. Okay. <laughs> Let me introduce uh, uh, very uh, uh, important, uh, very important edit uh, in the world, uh, representing uh, uh, TCM, you know, professional uh, expert and professor, and also doctors, Xie uh, Li Zhen, you know. I think I uh, first of all, I, uh, I I I take advantage of being uh, chair, chairing this section to uh, express. My gratitude to all, you know, the Dr. Xie uh, for her contribution to TCM, you know, uh, in the world uh, uh, during uh, her career, you know. And uh, we also, we always learn, you know, uh, the TCM from uh, Dr. Xie. I mean, although you can see the the society entitled as a copying and acupressure, but uh, her ability, uh, you know, to use the TCM is not only for two technicals. And uh, I, uh, I, I think that one of the important things is uh, when Dr. Xie, you know, do for me to to uh, to work in to work on these areas, and he she's one of the person you know publish you know the uh, uh, randomized control trial uh, using the actual you know uh, suppose to the uh, physical therapy to demonstrate, you know, the acupressure outperform the physical therapy. And uh, since then, you know, uh, in the world, every, everybody know, you know, a yeah. acupressure uh, uh, is uh, another uh, technique in addition to acupuncture, you know, to, uh, uh, to be used as a, as a very uh, efficient and also effective uh, therapies. And this is one of the things which is very uh, important for our international uh, evidence-based medicine societies, because uh, I think this is a first trial uh, for uh, demonstrating, you know, uh, application of the uh, uh, acupressures. And I know, uh, and because of acupressures, so you, you sometimes, you know, first time I met her, I. Uh, I uh, I always you know uh, think you know why is it so useful technicals because Dr. Xie already combined the traditional qi you know the qi is so important you know we learn uh, from her uh, about twenty years and still learning you know still learning qi so uh, from evidence based medicines I personally think Dr. Xie you know already you know. Uh, apply the chi base, you know, the therapy to uh, treating uh, disease, to prevent the disease, to pre to promote the health. So I I think you know uh, 
if you have time, you can get on the blogger, you know, the uh, blogger. He had, he, she has a very, very uh, well reputed uh, the blogger to look, to look at the, the details on everything uh, she already uh, practiced and also uh, disseminated to the societies. So, uh, uh, in short, I think uh, I. Uh, <clears throat> Looking forward to uh, hearing from her speech on, you know, qi based therapy principle and practice, and the particular, you know, uh, I think you know on um, the cupping and acupressure and other technicals as well. So let's welcome, you know, uh, Dr. Xie uh, about this uh, uh, <clears throat> very. Uh, <clears throat> Very important topical, and uh, uh, by combining the qi and uh, also uh, the TGM principles, to show how effective it is to uh, to demonstrate the effectiveness of the TGM. So, Doctor Shu, please, yeah. Uh, many thanks to Professor Chen's introduction. Uh, it is my great pleasure to present my study <clears throat> for over three decades. Uh, I developed a new uh, circuit um, moderate that is combined qi acupressure and copy. Uh, I would say this is a brand new uh, development. To study uh, speech, I would like to give a case a real case that you can feel how this treatment um, is going on. <clears throat> for example, I'm very anxious for these days. I could not sleep well because I have been like giving an English speech for a long time. So I, uh, but I know there's a point, vital point. Okay, we, we see the next, please, next, next slide. Okay, I, the next slide. Oh, now work. Okay, <clears throat> actually, in human body, there's a vital point on uh, thoracic fifth uh, segment that can control people's emotion. In other words, if we press that point, then we can be the anxiety and we can get a uh, better feeling. So, okay. So here, we push that or press that point then we can relieve the anxiety. Actually, more than anxiety, any uh, pressure, any uh, comfortable in our mind, we can use this point. But this is on the back. I cannot press it, press it. So I need someone to do it. Actually, it's better I do something for other people because to push the point, we need, we push it. Okay, uh, sorry, I'm not good at this. Uh, no problem. Okay. So it's better other people press for you, but it's not easy or it may not affect anyone to do that. When you push the right point, you need to use chi. The acquired chi, that acquired chi will be uh, explained later. So the, 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 the acquired chi is kind of energy, it's also kind of uh, mm, force. So right point, right force, right energy. Hmm. And <clears throat> that way, make the treatment, believe yourself. So, if we want to expedite the effect, good result, we can develop cupping. 
So T, acupressure and plus cupping will make the result relieve your pressure right away. Uh, actually, I do that for myself. Even though I cannot push my back, I have many uh, media to do that, so don't worry. <clears throat> So here, I'm going to talk about qi, acupressure, and cupping. These three subjects can operate, can perform separately. They have uh, its own uh, effectiveness. And they also can be practiced together if we want a better result or fast result. Okay. So all this talking may not uh, give you a good idea what the, this therapy is. So we can see the next. So this, this patient has acute onset gastritis. He feel very uncomfortable. It seems uh, the faster too fast. Huh? Uh, yeah, yeah. So, so, so you control the pain, huh? I mean, just, just wait, huh? Because Dr. Xie wanted to show the, uh, the real... I want to show how the therapy works. The real case. So we take a video. <clears throat> We use tea and acupressure, and uh, there's no cutting here. We dredge the tea from the from the stomach and put the waste tea or that tea mm -hmm. make the stomach uncomfortable. Go down and get out from our toes. So you can see, okay, please. So you can see, I put my right hand on the stomach area, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it definitely hand to get the chi from stomach down to the uh, lower leg, and then to the toes. Oh. So then the chi that enlarge the stomach and make the stomach pain uh, out of the toes. So you can see, once I do that, it's very painful. Uh, the chi therapy is painful. Uh, so you can see, he feels the better. Immediate relief. So this is a case showing how the chi basis works. So we can we see the next. This is uh, one of the uh, case I'm teaching in a conference. The, a young man has headache, and but he did, he does not know why the headache is. Right. So we use acupressure to detect why there are uh, why there's headache. Later on, we find it is because of the uh, <clears throat> temporal mandibular joint disorder. If your jaw dislocated or sublocated, then you feel headache. No medicine works, but we use that. So you can see. Can you pray? So this is, uh, uh, I take a film in my uh, teaching course. So it's not only the TMJ disorder, also because of the neck and the shoulder, the muscle is the stiffness and use for a long time. So later on, all the weight cannot go out, all go up to his head. So make the headache 
So we believe that things and maybe with the chi out of the head, uh, out of the head can can go down from the uh, toe and get out of the body. There's also a way that we can have the waste chi out of body on the top of the head. So you can see that. Okay, we see this. Next. Okay, and this one is a young man. He's a designer. Uh, has a headache. And it's a very uh, modern and famous uh, disease, headache caused by ice use. You watch the screen too much. You watch the cell phone too much. And the, 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 you know, there's a uh, smaller muscles uh, around the eyes. They use overuse, then the tension in both sides. So, but he doesn't know. He came to us for headache and no treatment, uh, no effect treatment uh, at all. So we find that it's caused by ice. So we press, we press these two points. These two points is very famous. We call it Tai Yang Xue. <laughs> uh, so, but the Tai Yang Xue is not just one point. So, acupressure, acupuncture cannot do it, but acupressure mm -hmm. can mm -hmm. because this area is bigger than a fifty dollar coin, and in the different angle, we relieve the tension of the headache and the eyes. And this is also very popular uh, uh, disease we have. We call it bent head. The head is bending down <laughs> and watch the cell phone or watch the notebook. So you lower your neck for a long time and the pain happen on the head, the back head. So for this treatment, we use qi. We use acupressure. We also use cut. But at this point, we need we need the patient cut hair out. <laughs> Otherwise, we could not do cutting on it. Okay, we see the next. Hey, next. Okay. Uh, two two Oh, no, the high height is some anger. Oh, but over there, have some, 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 some, it's also a very popular and famous, that is Lao Zhen. Pillow, drop yeah. your pillow. <laughs> Next time I will write an article talking about the uh, drop pillow. It's nothing to do with the pillow. It's because, <laughs> it's because you overuse your shoulder and overuse your neck. So we use this acupressure on the, this area. On this area, we can relieve the drug pillar. Okay, next. This is a center onset, uh, irregular heartbeat, left arm pain. This lady is a medical doctor. He feel heart attack and come to me. I said, no, you said not. She's learning acupressure from me. So I know what happened because the overuse in the shoulder, yeah, overuse in the shoulder will make the muscle shredded and make the muscle down here. So once I relieve the, the tense of the muscle, the heart, uh, the, the patient become feel better and the habit going down and resume the normal situation. Okay, next. Uh, okay. 
This is a junior high school student. It's a youth. Uh, he has uh, <coughs> difficulty in breathing mm -hmm. for since childhood. And we can see there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of skin rush on the chest. Uh, it's not a normal, we know. And all the all the uh, previous treatment could not help help him. So he comes to me. Okay, next. Then I found there's a trauma print mm -hmm. in on the chest. Oh, so I relieve the trauma, the old trauma. The trauma I can calculate, I can fill out. He's met in his childhood about uh, two grades or grades in the uh, uh, elementary school. Mm -hmm. Once this old trauma getting out, mm -hmm. so he got relief. Right. The chest wall can extend, can contract, so he feel better. Right. Uh, okay. Now, uh, okay. This. Okay. And this one is complaint chest tightness. Mm -hmm. As I just mentioned in the first, the, the bone uh, picture, this is a, a fifth segment of the thoracic uh, spine. We cup, we put cupping on it and get the uh, those waste the cheek cannot go out from uh, get out by the cupping. So he believe. This chest tightness right away. And this is emotional disorder. You can see this one, the color, pretty sick. And we can see the previous, uh, okay, sorry. The, this is also chest tightness. The color is different. Uh, then you can see the color is a difference. The imprint of the copy mean is meaningful. It shows the times, mm -hmm. the the uh, disorder, how long it lasts. Right. Okay. Then we see this one. You, you, you can see this is a button the hip. Uh, this is also also a lady. If your hip and leg discomfort only when walk, then he could not fight and go to the doctor. Uh, they give the uh, painkiller and give the muscle relaxant, but cannot do any good on this. By our occupation, we find there's a joint here. When walking, the joint squeaks. So only when walking, there will be feel discomfort, maybe pain, but he cannot say, uh, cannot evaluate pain or a sore or whatever, but he just complain while walking, he feel no good. After cupping, also before cupping, we do the acupressure and the acupressure needs quality. We are going to explain later. Okay, this is a, Oh, very famous low back pain. Almost around 70% of population has low back pain. Uh, but there's a lot of uh, causes cause low back pain. So this low back pain, I, I show it because this low back pain is caused by shoulder overwork. So only by acupressure, we can find out what is the cause, uh, cause to, uh, <clears throat> to cause the, the pain. Okay, then we're going to see the next. 
This is different from the, the previous one. <laughs> that is from the, the pain is caused by shoulder overuse. But this one is caused by twist of the your waist. So it's different. And we use also acupuncture to detect, copy to relieve. Okay, we're going to see, to, to explain why we use acupressure and cupping. The acupressure is to use through vital point to detect and to treat the illness. Acupressure needs qi, and qi, once your qi is strong enough, they will become a field, not just one point is a field. Depends on how strong you are. The field can be bigger, can be stronger. So the chi field, once we get the chi and have developed the field, we can use chi field induction. And we can also convey the chi to patient to help the patient to recover to be mother or to initiate the uh, repair system of the body. Also by acupressure in the uh, vital point, we collect those waste uh, metabolites. Metabolic, oh, sorry, I cannot find it. And extract the body, the uh, healing process. So the acupressure, collect the waste substance. Cupping is to take out the, those waste substance. So here, as I mentioned and showed in the previous uh, film, we see different point and different technique for different symptoms and disease. Okay, this is also our uh, teaching. Uh, I, I, a lot of uh, teaching course for my students. And this is for lobe pain. Lobe pain, as I mentioned before, some is from the shoulder, some is just caused by the, the, the lumbar air, and also some is caused by coxia, the button of the spine. So it's not easy just to explain why there's a lobe pain different. A lot of causes to cause a lower pain. Uh, you can pray that. You can pray the, this. Okay, we, we go next. So low pain is not easy to treat. You have to find where is the real uh, problem. Okay, we are talking now, we are going to uh, talking about the qi based search. First, where is the qi? And how the qi is in and out. So our uh, therapy, the main in and out conduit is fingers. Actually, I can use the chi for in and out by any part of my body. So you have to train yourself. You can see the, this. It's not just for me. It's take from the, this book. So everyone has this. So everyone has a bone chi. Oh, at birth, you got it. But the chi is just for maintain your It's not enough to treat other people. So you can see, this is a, uh, from the fingers. So the finger posture is different in normal situation. 
in normal posture. I have to, or all my students, have to train to practice exercise, have his fingers and palms into this condition. Therefore, you can control your chi in and also you can out, in and out. And uh, be careful. Once you put the chi out for physical principle, there is energy. So you may give the your collect healthy chi out and get wrong or bad or ear sick chi in. So we have to learn that. Uh, in, in my training, first, I teach my students be careful. Don't be sick when you practice this. So you, you can see your finger. Uh, okay, this is uh, my hand, my finger. Okay, once I want to use the song kiss tea for treatment, I use the middle finger. And this is, uh, you can see, I train, I, I train myself for this for several decades. Okay, that's another uh, uh, picture showing how chi dries. Lily, we can lead chi from the head to the toe. So you can see how I do, or we make it clear. You can see it's not tip of the toe, it's the joint just behind, just uh, uh, behind the, the toes. Okay, why this? Because different point, different area has different effect. Okay, so we give a lot of picture to show how our chi based therapy is work is working. And then we have to explain what is qi. I think uh, many Chinese people all know what is qi. From the uh, novel, from the film, from the uh, TV, from everything, we, we, we know qi is. So it's last for more than several thousands. And so we here explain what is qi. And there's uh, many important things. People need chi, otherwise you cannot be survived. So chi is component of our body. Our body we can separate into two parts. One is energy, the other is a substance material. When conceptions we got chi, that is the uh, <clears throat> original chi. Then after birth, people have to supply themselves. Otherwise, where can you get the uh, energy for survival, for operation, for doing all works? So we, we will explain. There's three types of chi. One is original chi, that's the people have first, uh, your mother gives you. And the other zhong chi, that is people, we don't have power, we, we, we do not connect with the Thai power company, uh, we don't have battery. So we automatically produce our own chi to support our life. This we call the zhong chi, that's come from bodies, uh, two system. One is a uh, triple focus system, Sanjiao. The other is Ta governs the other person. In Chinese, we call it the Sanjiao Jing. And this is Xinzu Bian Mai. These two, the Sanjiao Jing include three things, three focus, so three, upper, middle, and the lower. Upper is breathing. You take air from outside mm -hmm. and generate the energy for your own. And you take out the, the waste air 
from the uh, from the uh, upper uh, focus same time. And the middle is we use we we take food, we drink, and these two is provide us material or substance for our body use. Then once the, then these two <clears throat> the the energy we got from this we through the Xin Zhu Bian that is a heart heart beating blood circulation, and we provide the body to give substance for develop for develop for growth and they metabolize we need to get it out <coughs> then the lower focus system is your kidney is the renal and we cannot do anything for the renal and we can control our breathing we can control our intake food and water and this heart governor, this heart governor is to initiate the electric power of the heart. Otherwise, why your heart can, can work? So this is a two type of a qi. Any third, we call it acquired qi. The original qi is given by your mother. You cannot do anything. And the zhong qi is your body doing it automatically. You even know no. You know you you have the breathing. You have habit, but you don't know how it works. But the acquired qi can be obtained can be obtained through a special way by breathing, inhalation, and exhalating. So this is the energy that we can train and get and control using this correctly in our body, and we can promote our own body to enhance. So the qi energy here, the training, we call it acquired qi. And what I mentioned here, qi basic therapy is using the acquired qi. Maybe you can use Zhong Qi, you can use original Qi, but once you use up all the energy, you are gone. Okay, so this is a type of Qi. Then we want to let us know how the acquired Qi is training. Okay, just mention in or exhalating. That is a very simple way, that's breathing. But the very important is the mind thought of the qi training. That is important to avoid any uh, wrong mistake. And but once we get the the uh, really qi training, once we get acquired qi, the the acquired qi can. The effect of quality is significant, will not regress, will not decrease, and is useful for life. So the training for the quality, once you obtain that, you got the wealth because you never. So, qi is is also to protect ourselves from not being uh, sick and use for self-interest and also can once you have enough uh, energy you can convey the qi to other people then one of them is to convey qi to other person to cure their disease and The qi is not only, the last point is said, the qi is not only for body, it's also good for mind, good for conscience. So, what's to... So, here, yeah, because I, I'm afraid that I cannot explain now clearly in, Chinese, in English, I, you know, uh, it's it not so easy to translate that. 
So I left a Chinese one, a Chinese version here, you have better understand. Then, okay, why we need uh, train our chief, especially in practice. So not only to enhance self chi energy and effect control of chi flow in the body, we can use it for self-interest. Uh, you, you can see that. And you can see using this to benefit other persons. So here I would um, uh, <clears throat> I would say again, actually train the chi is to benefit your first and then autism. Only when you have enough strong chi, then you have others, otherwise you will you will have a, a wrong in your body. Okay. So I also give a Chinese here. It's not easy to translate uh, because of my limited language. English ability. So everyone can see that. Then I would like to say the this chi acupressure and cupping, these three, how can they go together? Acupressure, we know there are a lot of acupressure in the market. But those can make Best effect is using quiet chi. You may not use it. You can use your zhong chi, even your original chi, to place the point. If, do, if you do not get the strong enough chi, you may lose your energy yourself forever. Then your health will become done. So the occupation need what? Need chi go together. And cupping, just uh, explain, is to remove the waste uh, substance from the digital side, from the body. So can uh, <clears throat> expedite, can expedite the effectiveness here, the mechanism. For acupoint, acupressure must be on acupoint. Actually, to my level, I can use any place, not on point. It depends how strong you are. So once you have ability to detect acupoint by acupressure, you can find out the, the region site. And why people get sick? Because they don't have enough they don't have uh, stronger or enough uh, energy to maintain their physi physiology or maybe uh, the physiological function. And we use qi field induction, we can detect where is strong, where is weak, and where is the problem, uh, the, the region site. And once we collect those waste substances, we using cupping. So I just mentioned acupressure and qi and cupping can work separately. And they also can work together. So this is a cooperation, uh, collaborated among the three. And I make a film. Now this is long enough. I, I'm, I wonder we have the time to see this. This is for more than five minutes. Uh, just, just, just show a part of it. Yeah, it would be very good to show. Yeah, this is uh, both the uh, Chinese and English subtitles.
所以这些功法，其实我在部落格大网络里面都有啊，这个免费给大家看啊。就是我再提醒一下，就是心法很重要，不然会出一点问题。那我们刚刚有讲过，说， sorry， no problem， that proof I I haven't、uh, speak English for quite a long time. No okay. Uh, I just mentioned we use we use qi reduction and to detect where to detect the vision side of the illness. And I want to present a case that is、uh, never found in the textbook and never found in the、uh, the clinical、uh, report. I call it.、Uh, Truncation of conception vessel. Okay. First, I see quite a female patient come to me and complain getting weight. The weight can be get、uh, can be increased by ten twenty kilo, and the body sore, sweaten, abdominal bloated, a lot of、uh, water. Air in the、uh, abdomen and good and short of breathing and pick up constipation difficult breathing in walking chest tightness irregular habit frequent headache insomnia and other symptoms generally they are weak fatigue easily 
and grumping, irritable. All these kinds can appear gradually and they don't like a group of syndrome and no treatment at all. Uh, even they can live by medicine, uh, passion, but the problem is uh, the problem uh, lasts quite a long time. And I have so many uh, such patients and I study that trip to them. And I found all this female has the caesarean section surgery. Three, so this is surgery. Uh, this is very interesting. And I will explain that. Yeah. It seems that uh, some slide is. Okay. So we can see this uh, CS surgery wound. Uh, the, this is the imprint of the uh, cupping. And this is a we do cupping on the uh, CS wound. And this is conception vessel, the lowest, lowest point, and we do uh, camping on that. Okay, then I want to explain. This is before treatment. We see the CS wound, or this is old wound, maybe before uh, for uh, 10 or 20 years. So we see a big berry here. And that's before treatment. After treatment, this is an old day, CS1, but the berry becomes smaller. And why? And we will explain that. We just uh, noticed that all a group of symptoms. Okay, this is a conception method. I want to explain how physio uh, pathological mechanism. This this slide shows the normal, healthy people conception vessel. The conception vessel is from the mouth, the low end of the uh, lower lips and go down to the button. Just a little bit before the anus. So this is, there's a uh, 23 point here. Okay, next. So what's she? is when we breathe, the chi is goes from the uh, upper point to the lower point, breathe. So goes this. And then we have a CS uh, section surgery. Then the chi could not go out. So they accumulate in the belly and then go up again and become big amount and then even more. So you can first big belly, then disturbance in gastrointestinal in intestinal uh, organ, then compress our heart and compress our lung and all, all that things and they could not go out because the air is not going out from the mouth. They has to go down. So this is the physiopathological mechanism of this truncation or conception vessel. So I call it concepted 
uh, truncated us. Oh, sorry. Okay. Okay. I'll go go back. So I conclude the essay. Let's go. Of conception based, uh, in Chinese, we call it the mind. Mm -hmm. And this has been proved by me for several years. Mm -hmm. But I would like to explain a little bit more. This is not only happen in female, in male say, once we get such kind of uh, uh, operation. Mm -hmm. But now the female got the uh, uh, cesarean section surgery, we have this kind of uh, uh, disease. I have an in depth explanation article in the fifth uh, new medicine. Mm -hmm. So you can see from the magazine, uh, you, you can see that. So, so this is a treatment reconstruction. We reconstruction the uh, conception of vessel by what? By which I mentioned, acupressure, chi induction, and uh, pumping. Okay. So before it's a big barrier. After the big berry gone and all kind of a group of symptoms relief disappeared. Okay, so and this kind of uh, uh, method or this technique is very helpful to locating etiology. Not only that, we can find out cause, set of causes, or manners, or causation of a disease or condition. And we find for a number of symptoms or disease that is often recurrent or not treatable by normal uh, medicine, we have found a lot like uh, brain tumor, asthma, vertigo, low back pain, and uh, uh, uterus and prostate tumor, and many others. So I would say the therapy is quite useful. This is our fifth journal of new medicine uh, just come out by uh, end of October. All this information you can get in, in this way. Uh, this is just newly established, uh, will be complete, coming, and will complete. Uh, you can get a lot of information. The particularly of the, uh, Particularly, point of this magazine is we are not talking about uh, scientific proof, randomized or, or uh, <clears throat> such kind of a very uh, serious article. We mainly focus on and something related to the people by themselves. So this is our specialty of our magazine. Okay, and and okay. thanks. <laughs> I think I think you know we uh, we uh, enjoyable you know in your in your in your speech actually I. From my viewpoint, actually, this is exactly uh, talking about the precision 
the precision uh, medicine, precision TCM, you know, precision acupuncture, precision tapping. Uh, uh, if I use the, uh, the 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 word to describe the speech, you know, so so you see, uh, I think Doctor Shea, you know, give a. Uh, um, I said this speech is a very invaluable, you know. I mean, cannot uh, I think you cannot assess any speech like such kind of a speech to demonstrate, you know, how chi based setup is in connection with um, uh, acupuncture and also the the the, <clears throat> the copying. And I I I think time is very limited, so I would not uh, eat up so much. Uh, for uh, further comment, and uh, and I I, uh, I I leave some question in the panel discussion if you if you want. But this is really very important. You know, uh, I can say it's uh, it's it's something like you know the 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 Bible of the uh, the chi and also uh, acupressure and the cuppings. You know, you can you can feel like that. You know, and for the chi exercise, uh, you can. You, you can find out in the blog, you know, which is a free, you know, for everyone uh, to uh, use that. You know, Dr. Xie want to explain. So for our agent and colleague, if you want to use the chi exercise, you can get on the blog. Okay, so that's again, you know, uh, approach this speech. You know, uh, it's so wonderful. Let's proceed to next one. Thank you, uh, Dr. Xie and Professor Chen. So we are going to our next topic. And the next topic is talking about the role of complementary and alternative treatment in Asia society. And we are inviting Professor Chou Yuexia to be a, to, to chair this section. Let's welcome Professor Cho. Hi, everyone. This is uh, Sherry Cho, and I'm the faculty of the Chang'e University, and also uh, belong to the Department of Healthcare Management. Uh, today is my uh, my great honor to introduce the Professor Li Li Zhuolan. Yeah. Li. Yeah, Professor Lee. And he uh, graduated from the University of Hong Kong and uh, also trained, uh, got the first class honor from the bachelor degree and also uh, graduated and field from this university. After that, he also received a PhD from the Australian National University. He has served as a sub-dean of the Faculty of the Arts and the Social Science, the director of the Center of the Research in Chinese. It's a national university of Singapore. And Professor Lee's uh, research interests, including the Chinese intellectual history, Chinese culture, it's an Asia Confucianism, and also the Chinese belief and the custom. Uh, special for the Ming Dynasty history. And currently, Professor Li uh, is a, a academic director of the minor of the China Study Program at the Faculty of the Arts and the Social Science. And also run the uh, National University of Singapore and the Beijing University double MA degree with a Chinese language program. Besides the uh, uh, outstanding academic work, uh, concurrently, he is uh, very active in the uh, government committee society as a council or advisor members. He also wrote a lot of books. Uh, so you can see uh, the book, a uh, lot list uh, regarding the Chinese culture, beliefs, and the custom. And today is our honor to invite Professor Li to talk the role of the complementary and the alternative treatments in the ancient society. So please, uh, Professor Li. Thank you, uh, 
uh, ridicule for the introduction. And uh, let me share my PowerPoint first. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, I think you should be able to see my. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, um, thank you for the introduction. In fact, um, the uh, information is a little bit outdated. <laughs> I have to uh, explain a little bit why this guy is uh, talking here. I'm. It's a little bit seems a uh, oh, place for me for uh, in front of so many experts. Well, in fact, um, well, about 15 years ago, I have a research group with um, uh, most of them are European scholars from Italy, from Germany. We have a research group on the study of emotion, emotion and state of mind in uh, Asian societies. So this research group, we, we, we meet every year in different parts of Europe. So we travel to every parts in almost in, in Italy and also Germany. One of the key member of, of this research group uh, is Professor Angelika Messner from Germany. In fact, uh, Angelika Messner is currently the president of the uh, International Consortium uh, for uh, Traditional Medicine. Uh, she is uh, teaching in, um, in, in Germany. So her research interest is uh, about uh, Chinese medical texts how Chinese medical texts uh, are related to emotion and the mind of the human body. So, so we have a very close uh, research collaboration. So, well, for myself, in fact, my training is about Chinese thought and culture. So had nothing to do originally, had nothing to do with uh, Chinese medicine. But about 10 years ago, I have uh, undercover work when I say undercover work, it doesn't mean that I'm a spy, so put to Well, in fact, uh, no one knows about, I start to work on uh, traditional Chinese medicine almost 10 years ago. So because it's, uh, it's my interest. So then uh, four years ago, then I proposed to my university, I want to offer a module on TCM. Well, I'm not a practitioner. I don't have the license to practice but I'm a researcher. So four years ago, I offered a module as a general education module in my university. And uh, at that time I set a quota for 250 students. But when the module was launched, 900 students want to take the module. So I asked the student why you want to take this module is uh, about traditional Chinese medicine. And many of our young students told me because they grew up in a society taking Chinese medicine and then uh, all kinds of uh, things related to uh, TCM. So they want to know more about this topic because they have no idea how, for example, uh, what is qi and then what is, uh, what is acupuncture, what is coupling, all, all this kind of thing. So then I start with 250 students. Then every year, because every year, in fact, 900 students want to take the module. So I increase. Uh, by 100 students every year. Last year, uh, I used the biggest uh, lecture theater in my faculty that was for, that can take only 450 students. So last year, the quota was 450 students and the quota was met in within two, two weeks. Then we have 450 students. Now this year, because of online teaching, we don't have to limit it by the size of the lecture theater. So this year I set the quota at 600 then I have 600 students this semester. So, well, that means a lot of young people, they want to know, in fact, about traditional medicine, especially in our Asian society. So today I want to talk about um, our traditional medicine, how it's going to uh, play a more important role in our modern society, especially we are facing an ep 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 epidemic disease nowadays. So my topic today is the role of complementary in Asian society. Now, first of all, we are living in a modern society. 
very much uh, limited by the Western concept. So in Western concept, when, when they mention about conventional or mainstream medicine, in fact, we are talking about medicine. If Professor Chen asked me to talk about conventional medicine, I said, how can I talk about conventional medicine? Conventional medicine, that means Western medicine. So, but in our Asian society, traditional medicine, in fact, is conventional medicine, is it? It's our chuan tong. So, but in, in modern society, conventional and mainstream is Western medicine. So any non-mainstream practice is used together with conventional medicine is called complementary. Any if a non-mainstream practice is used in place of a conventional medicine is called alternative medicine. So that's why nowadays when we say uh, complementary and alternative medicine, in a short form we use CAM, C-A-M. That means it's a combination of complementary and alternative medicine. But in fact, it's opposite to conventional and mainstream medicine. So nowadays, so when we say in integrative medicine, we're bringing together everything together, then it's integrative medicine. So today I'm talking about complementary and alternative treatments in our, in our Asian society. Now, first of all, in fact, uh, CAM or conventional uh, complementary and alternative medicine is not only limited to Asian society. In fact, in the Western countries, it's so common. Even in the United States, if you refer to the National Health Statistic Report, about 59 million Americans age four and above, uh, at least they have, uh, they they have uh, expenditure related to complementary health approach. Altogether, 52.2 million for adults and 4.1 million US dollars for children. So in fact, it's a, it's a huge amount. And, and total our pocket uh, spending for the complementary approaches was 30 billion dollars, 28.3 billion for adults and 1.9 billion for children. So representing 9.2% of all our pocket spending by America. That means uh, complementary and alternative uh, 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 treatment and medicine, in fact, is also very common in Western countries. So among those who have uh, on this camp, roughly about each person spent $510. So it's very common in, in, in the Western country as well. Now, but the type of complementary health approaches in Western country in the United States, uh, based on the same report, in fact, there are three types. One is natural products, herbs, vitamins is also regarded as complementary uh, health products. Mind and body practices, for example, yoga, meditation, massage therapy, tai chi, qi gong, all these are mind and body practices regarded as complementary health approaches. Other complementary health approaches, according to the National Center for Complementary and Integrated Integrative Health, also include Chinese um, medicine or some other uh, 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 medical practice. For example, uh, uh, Ayurvedic medicine. That means uh, the uh, uh, traditional medicine of the Indian people. So all these are regarded as other complementary health approaches. So. If you look at uh, the report for the most common natural products among adults, so as in fact, natural products, vitamins are also regarded as complementary health products. For example, in 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 um, in two thousand and two to two thousand and seven, you, you see a change, a, 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 some big changes. For example, two thousand and two, uh, ginseng is ranked number two in in the United States as kind of health product. Then gradually ginseng, the, the, the ranking drop. So in 2007, we, we find that the first, the most popular is uh, omega-3 fish oil and then followed by uh, Google salmon kind of uh, uh, pills for, for joints. So all this, you see that they are health products in, in, in United States. So regarded as a part of CAM. Now, according to the American Journal of Health Promotion uh, in 1997, the top reason for people using uh, um, 
uh, medical uh, kind of uh, alternatives uh, is one is the desire and expectation of wellness. So to get to get well and also decide to take fewer medications and experience fewer side effects. Everyone knows that uh, Western drugs have side effects. So people want to keep healthy and they decide to cut personal health care costs. So if you maintain and have good health, of course, you cut health care costs. And increasing support of alternative medicine by prominent people. That means advertising and also publicity by uh, by famous people, uh, movie stars, all this also help to promote alternative medicine. So in fact, all this uh, shows that not only for Asian countries, even for Western countries, this is a, a important market and this is a, 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 an area that we have to pay attention to. Now, in Singapore, uh, based on a report by our our medical school colleagues, uh, they wrote a paper on complementary and alternative medicine use in multi-racial Singapore because Singapore is a mix of Chinese, Malay, Indian, and also Eurasians. So the report shows that 76% use CAM over a 12-month period in Singapore. So it's, it's a huge number, 76, 76%. Females were 2.1 times more likely than males. Of course, female uh, health products also try to uh, maintain their beauty. Chinese were the most frequent user followed by the Malay and the Indians. Uh, traditional Chinese medicine is the main type of uh, camp for the uh, Singaporeans. So 88% and then followed by Malay, they use their own traditional medicine, 8% and then the Indians 3%. Similar to Western studies, CAM was most more likely to be used for maintaining our health than for treatment of illness. So they want to maintain health rather than the treatment of illness. So 74% did not discuss the use of CAM with their Western trained doctors. So that is an interesting point. Many of them don't tell the doctors. Doctors that uh, they are, even if they are seeing the, the Western doctors, they won't mention that I'm taking Chinese medicine, I'm taking Chinese uh, herbal things. So that is an interesting thing. So based on this, of course, this chart I just uh, mentioned just now uh, is the uh, use of CAM by different ethnic groups, Chinese, Malay, and Indians, and then the uh, different types of CAM, uh, mentioned here, for example, Chinese herbs occupy 23.7%, taking ginseng is 13.1%, uh, Chinese topicals, that means, uh, in topicals, that means in Chinese, we say, why yong yao, so, so that, for example, uh, ointment, all this kind of thing, 25.4%, uh, massage, tai chi, qi gong, acupuncture, max boston, so all this is the popular forms of uh, CAM in Singapore. If you look at, uh, based on the same uh, report, if you look at the hypothetical condition for which CAM is preferred kind of form of treatment of conventional Western medicine, that means if you look at, for example, that you, you sprain your ankle, 69.3% find that CAM probably is better than Western medicine. So I, I couldn't see uh, uh, in Chinese called Die Da, Die Da Si Fu, then it's better. And then for back and joint pain, 61% find that probably is uh, better than Western doctor. Uh, stomach ache, diarrhea, chronic pain, cough and cold symptom, fracture, fatigue, cancer, then you see, well, the lowest will be heart attack or this. So they find the probably Western doctor may give you a better treatment. So this is uh, based on the survey. Another one is attitude, beliefs, and perception of CAM among users and non-users. So for example, the first question, CAM interfere with um, conventional Western medicine. So then we find that almost half of the people, the black color means those who have used CAM before, the white color uh, bar means those who are non-user of CAM. So if you look at the, the, the chart here, for example, CAM is more effective in health 
maintenance. So we find that in fact, almost 60% of the people find that uh, CAM is more effective um, uh, than, than other, other treatments. Uh, CAM has less side effect. It's also more than 60%. And you would recommend it to your friends almost uh, 70, more than 70% find that in fact, CAM is a, is a good uh, recommendation. So these are some of the um, uh, findings that we find that in fact, people find that CAM uh, is an important part of our life already. Now, but the problem is different countries may have different policy regarding CAM, that means complementary and alternative medicine. In Singapore, in our Ministry of Health, the webpage, it, even traditional Chinese medicine is recognized. And then the practitioner, they have to get a license from the Ministry of Health. But in Singapore, the Ministry of Health stressed that we base our healthcare services on Western medical science. So it's still, uh, so Singapore is very strict. For example, uh, TCM practitioner, they cannot go to a hospital to see patients. They cannot see patient in the hospital ward. So it's still a very restricted. So they can only see their patient in their TCM clinic. They cannot go inside the ward to see patient with the Western doctors. So, so different country, different places, they have different policy. I think the integration of traditional and Western medicine may be better in Korea, in Japan, uh, in Taiwan, in mainland China, in Hong Kong, because I think, for example, in Hong Kong, in, in, in the medical school, for example, the Hong Kong University Medical School, the TCM department is part of the medical school. So they integrated into the medical uh, service system. But in Singapore, it's still separate. So. In Singapore, the national, uh, the NTU, the, the uh, Nanyang Technological University, they offer a TCM uh, program. But the TCM program is within the uh, Faculty of Science. So it's a double degree for life science and TCM. So it's not part of the medical school. So, so there's a lot of restriction. So every play, every country, every region, they have the different policy. For example, the current stages of TCM in Singapore. So uh, it's based on the practice of, of consultation of TCM petitioner by the Singapore population. So here we are referring to TCM petitioner, not only, not just CAM. CAM, as I mentioned, you buy health products can also belong to the CAM category, but TCM petitioner. Now the percentage of population that I consulted a TCM petitioner for Chinese, more than half of the population have consulted a TCM petitioner. If you go to the clinic and see the TCM petitioner, maybe you, you ask for acupuncture treatment, uh, maxiboston, cupping treatment or herbal treatment. So usually an older person 40 and above uh, restricted to outpatient services because in Singapore we don't have a TCM hospital. So only with outpatient service. And we have 10,000 person visit TCM clinics every day compared to 74,000 persons visit Western medical clinics. So it's based on our population of about 5 million people. So every day is about 10,000 people visiting TCM clinic. In, from the data in 1997, we have 1,870 CM petitioners, but now, well, definitely it's more than 2,000 already. As I mentioned, the Nanyang Technological University, every year they train 60 TCM uh, physicians every year. So now it's more than 2,000 already. So 65% of the TCM practitioners in Singapore are practicing acupuncture. So it's a most common kind of a practice for TCM practitioner. Now, a preliminary study of complementary and alternative medicine in Singapore based on this, and then they have a question, why do you think that 
Orthodox medicine, that means Western medicine practitioners are unwilling to communicate with CAM practitioner. Because we find that usually the TCM uh, patients, they don't want to tell their Western doctor that they are seeing TCM uh, practitioner at the same time or taking TCM herbal uh, drugs, herbal treatments or herbal, herbal drinks. So the reason why, based on our survey, we find that, first of all, lack of adequate CAM education. Even in our medical school, our, our medical students, they are not taught CAM education. What is complementary or alternative medicine or traditional medicine? And then distrust in CAM therapies. That means the Western doctor, they don't have trust in CAM therapies. A lack of scientific evidence in CAM therapies. They find that it's lack of. The survey is based on the some of sometimes based on the uh, medical professions. Lack of legal recognition for CAM therapies. Philosophical differences between both medicines. So that in both Western and traditional medicine, they have different different uh, uh, system of, uh, of 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 thought regarding. Uh, um, uh, medical treatments, and fear of competition from CAM practitioners, and fear of liability for referring to CAM practitioners. That means a Western doctor, even if the person find that probably CAM may be helpful for the patient, he will not recommend the patient to have a CAM treatment because fear of liability. So, so all these are uh, factors that affecting the. Uh, the integration of the traditional medicine with the Western medicine. But as I mentioned, in some countries or in some regions, the situation may be different. For example, in Hong Kong, we find that uh, they're always integrating Western medicine with traditional Chinese medicine. For example, this Dr. Susan Jamison, uh, she had a clinic in Hong Kong that, uh, well, she's Western trained doctor and she, and among her patients, you can find a lot of big names, uh, movie stars and also uh, rock singers, uh, even uh, some of the big names in, 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 in uh, uh, some of the very famous singers, so are, are her patients. But if you look at uh, what she offers, for example, anti-aging acupuncture. So, of course, it's traditional. Chinese medicine and also qi healing, qi gong and aroma meridian therapy. So all this are so she combining the two together, Western and also traditional Chinese medicine, and then she became very popular. So this is an example of integration of the traditional medicine and also Western medicine. And also a paper published a. Uh, Hong Kong Polytechnic University on the role of complementary medicine in nursing and healthcare professionals in Hong Kong. They mentioned about, in fact, why there's a growing interest in the use of uh, complementary medicine. There are many reasons uh, related to these factors, to these reasons of growing interest. One is the recognition of the potential benefit of the therapies. That means if a government recognize the benefit of certain kind of treatment, then it will become very popular. So government policy is very important. The second is the limitation and side effects of orthodox treatments approaches. So that means the side effect of this kind of traditional treatment, treatments on patients probably also give to the growth of the interest. And the third is increasing expectation for a more holistic approach to providing care. That means holistic approach rather than you have heart problems, see a heart a specialist, you have brain problems, see a brain specialist. So it's a holistic, that means you take care of the whole body. The quality of life issues because of people treat their life, of course, more important now. Improving control in treatment process and also the client's expectation of better communication with practitioners, rather than you see a, a medical doctor, you cannot uh, you you cannot ask too much questions. And adaptation of particular 
cooling system compatible with specific cultural backgrounds. That means very often, because especially in Asian societies, because of their cultural background, sometimes the treatment is very important. So if the treatment is also related to your cultural background, definitely will give the patient a better kind of confidence. Confidence. So th this is very different. So this this is you can see a growing interest, but before I end, in fact, I want to draw your conclude your your attention to a report by the World Health Organizations. In fact, they have a report about traditional medicine strategy. Now, the World Health Organization, of course, uh, identified there's a category called traditional medicine. So they mentioned about traditional and complementary medicine. So complementary medicine, of course, you take uh, vitamins or other things. Traditional, because in, in many of the countries, they have their own traditional medicine. For example, Chinese, the Japanese, the Korean, the Indian, the Malays, they also have their own traditional medicine. So they recognize the importance of traditional medicine. So they have a report and the report is for 10 years report to 2014 to 2023. In fact, if you look back, seven years have already passed. There are only three more years. And in this report, the World Health Organization, in fact, lists out three important objectives for us, for our uh, scholars and also practitioners to, um, to work hard. The three ob objectives, one is to build a knowledge base for active management of traditional and complementary medicine to appropriate national policies. The first one is national policies. That means that government, all the governments have to work hard to build this knowledge base so that people know about uh, traditional medicine and complementary medicine. So in fact, I told my student, I offer the module and then I have 600 students. It's a big workload, but I told my student, I'm doing a national service. If our young people all understand how to take good care of their body, when they grow old, in fact, we are saving health expenditure for the government. So, so the first objective is to build a knowledge base and then so that through the national policy. The second objective is to strengthen the quality assurance, safety, proper use and effectiveness of the traditional and complementary medicine by regulating products. That means to make sure that products are safe, to make sure that the practitioners, they are licensed, they have proper training. So all this is the second objective. So the third one is to promote universal health coverage by integrating traditional and complementary medicines or services into healthcare services. That means combining the traditional medicine with the modern Western medicine is the third objective. If we look back, seven years have passed, what we have done whether we have achieved any of the three objectives. There are three more years to go. So from 2014 to 2023. So in fact, we still have a lot of work to do. And the most important thing is to make our people understand about the importance of traditional medicine to national policies and also to the national policies and government intervention, probably to have a better integration of the traditional medicine and modern medicines. Otherwise, if the two are still not talking to each other, there won't be a chance that we can integrate the two. So for example, for COVID-19, understand that in some countries, for example, China, Taiwan, and Hong Kong, they have been trying their best to use both Western and Chinese medicine to cure COVID-19. So, so this is one example that in fact, there are lots of uh, 
uh, opportunity that traditional medicine and Western medicine can work together. So this is what I want to talk about today. That means uh, if you look at uh, CAM, complementary and alternative medicine, in fact, the, um, the future probably lies with integrative uh, medicine. That means we're combining our, our traditional law wisdom together with the Western um, uh, scientific medicine. So, well, that is something we, 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 we have to look forward to. Um, that is all for my today's presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Lee. Uh, maybe we have a one or two questions. Yeah, I uh, I would like to ask uh, Professor Xiong, uh, are you online? Xiong Lao Si. Xiong Lao Si, are you in the Zoom? Hi, Professor Xiong. Can you hear from us, Xiong Lao Si? No. Okay. Uh, never, never mind. No, we can uh, we can invite her later. On. But uh, thank you for Zolan, your your wonderful speech. And I I can share I can share our experience. Our national health insurance system already include TCM as a part of the you know as part of the payment system. So uh, so that, it, I, I mean it's it's actually uh, it's actually the the. The, the the quite you know something to achieve you know in the future and i pre appreciate your concept about integration you know medicine you know integrating medicine by combining the uh, the uh, the tcm and also the uh, the <coughs> also tax medicine you know uh, yeah i believe this is a um, uh, this is a is a is a is a, is a quite right and is on the right track particular you know uh, uh useful for uh, for cancer patients, uh, they, they receive the uh, you know the the German therapies combined in combination with the TCM that would be very very uh, uh, <clears throat> comfortable with uh, these patients. According to my uh, uh, experience from uh, learning from Dr. Shea as well, and also you know from other you know TCM patients. I, I just, you know, I just enjoy the speech, yes. Thank you, Professor. Yes, I think uh, that's very important, especially, for example, for stroke patients. If they can uh, have TCM treatment at the same time, probably uh, the recovery period will be shorter, stroke patients. Yeah. But the uh, pity is that in Singapore, uh, the TCM petitioner, they cannot issue medical certificates. So if you go to see a TCM petitioner, you cannot get an MC, and then uh, so it's not recognized. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that they 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 will consider in the future for from government <laughs> <laughs> because you have so many students, <laughs> two hundred, yeah, maybe. Yeah, I think I think you know uh, we we probably we can uh, leave some question in the panel discussion, you know. Yeah, and, sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Because, but uh, you know, I mean, the doctor's speech and also your speech, are, you know, are wonderful because uh, they you're talking about you know how to how to uh, how to make use of the TCM, you know, to uh, <clears throat> to expand uh, the 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 uh, the also those medicine into the holistic, you know, the health health care. I mean, this is one, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Professor Lee and Professor Shaw. Well, now we have a break, and maybe we'll start in five minutes. Five, five so, minutes. What time we come back? Uh, 40, April 
Okay, 40, we come back just for uh, six minutes. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you, Tola. Uh, oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you. 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 Thank我刚才昨天讲完我本来想叫你看面一下 非常厉害，高兴啊！第四，也是非常非常非常非常非常非常非常非常非常非常非常非常非常非常非常非常非常非常非常非常非常非常非常非常非常非常非常非常非常非常非常非常非常非常非常非常非常非常非常非常非常非
very early now. <laughs> Chicago, Chicago is like six six o'clock. Uh, so you know our assistant. Uh, could we bring Silva in? Sylvia, are you still there? Dai Yin, you there? Yeah. 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 You know, Jackie has a background in cognitive uh, humanities, uh, neurocognitive humanities. You know, Harold is studying technology and technology. so I think that the team, both in substance and in disciplines. Sorry. Um, I thought they did a, a wonderful presentation. Xie 他们这些医师去join跟他们一起做study very very interesting and solid 对科学上是帮助很大了因为他这个东西是把其实很多书包啊蓝金那些书啊他其实在部落格里面他写了很多书写一次但我们没时间介绍那么多书啊但是我们气的东西从那边来非常重要非常重要非常重要非常重要非常重要非常重要非常重要非常重要非常重要非常重要非常重要非常重要非常重要非常重要非常重要非常重要非常重要非常重要非常重要非常重要非常重要非常重要非常重要
uh, uh, research uh, for erasure of the intervention program, uh, particularly on the preventive medicine. Uh, now we welcome uh, uh, Dr. Xu to uh, deliver uh, uh, his talk, please. Okay, thank you for thank you for the kind words, Professor Chen. And I think the reason we are here have the, this meeting with the online form, uh, not only because our interest in traditional and uh, alternative medicine, but also the pandemic of COVID nineteen. So I will make use of this uh, pandemic quiz. Make some issues or problems in the providing the evidence medicine, not only in the field of CAM, but also in the so called orthodontic medicine to, uh, to make uh, illustrations. So, as all of us know, the uh, COVID 19 pandemic not, now have also have co uh, global strike, uh, have, have made a great impact on the, the, glo the global population. And according to our prediction, up to September six, the the COVID nineteen pandemic will will have the confirmed case up to uh, twenty seven million, and cause more importantly, it costs about around nine nine hundred thousand. So this is uh, compared with the uh, uh, some respiratory disease, for example, influenza. This is a remarkable numbers in terms of the death it caused. So facing not only for this, uh, in the in the pandemic of the COVID nineteen, it this is a uh, it causes uh, remarkable infections, and also this is a uh, very different from the our uh, previous knowledge on the infectious disease. This is infectious disease, which means if what you contract the infection, not different from our previous uh, our previous. Impression that if we did not provide effective treatment and therapy, it may progress from the mild respiratory disease to, to the involved in the low respiratory disease and pneumonia and also the systemic disease and progress to ARDS, which is the severe form of the pneumonia and further to death. So, facing with this kind of uh, threat, facing with this kind of uh, threat, there are a lot of uh, treatment modalities have been proposed. Uh, in the in terms of the they, they, since this has been about uh, six months since the pandemic, so there are a lot of uh, treatment modalities and medications proposed by the orthodontic medicine. Not only focused on the immune response, but also the antiviral therapy and also steroid. Steroid and one one of the treatment proposed by the which is lies between the orthodontic medicine and also the conventional medicine is the quinine. So, as a convention of the orthodontic medicine, since so many evidence have been proposed, so they do a, a meta analysis, try to integrate all of the current available evidence to suggest our we clinicians which kind of treatment is most useful. But uh, disappointingly, although there are so many treatment modalities being, being proposed, till now only one, which is the old old medicine. It is a steroid, which has been proved, proved to be effective in treating uh, COVID-19 patients. But however, however, there are some paradoxes in it, in this kind of uh, uh, gathering of the evidence. So this is a, a summary from the current available uh, literature. So this, the first line is the steroid, which has been proved the, with the high, most uh, uh, high level of the to prove that it can be used to treat in the COVID nineteen patient, but another two two uh, treat medicines one is the severe, the other is the hydrochloroquine, or is it a, a, a special form of the quinine? In the very beginning of the pandemic, that we the, our medical society think it may be help helpful in treating the COVID nineteen patient, but because of the the method in gathering the uh, evidence. So now it is it, it is it's still in the place of undetermined evidence. So when we're talking about the uh, Chinese map, we focus on our uh, so-called uh, CAM to the conventional Chinese medicine. Actually, there are a lot of uh, regimens that were proposed in the Chinese medicine being used to treating or preventing, even preventing the respiratory disease. And also following the rule of the orthodontist medicine, they do a uh, uh, 
meta-analysis and to show from the randomized control trial using uh, regimens of the uh, Chinese medicine, they show that when talking about preventing the infection, they are about 60, 65% efficacy preventing a respiratory disease. So it's very promising to apply the, uh, the Chinese medicine in preventing or treating the uh, COVID-19, which is also a kind of respiratory disease. And moreover, uh, when we, uh, in the conventional uh, medicine, there is a concept of disease progression. So with different uh, disease stages, there were corresponding um, symptoms to be evaluated, and they will provide different regimen corresponding to treating that kind of the, of the symptoms. Of course, of, all of these have been followed qi-based qi uh, theory. In, the, in terms of the conventional Chinese medicine. So following this uh, principle, they also have a, a, a spectrum of disease prevention, fundamental and also the physical, and also the public health to prevent in the uh, infection of the disease. But however, in the, all of this, in the view of the uh, uh, West so-called orthodontic medicine, there is, an, there is not enough evidence to support him, the uh, widespread use of uh, Chinese medicine. Partly, and this, I use this picture to, to show that there are different regimens focusing on the severe disease and even for the recovery form of the disease. So in taking, uh, taking chance of this uh, treatment, the medications for treating COVID-19, I will use the quinine as a, uh, as a Example of the Chinese medicine and the Rendensivia is the orthodontist medicine. Actually, they are facing with the similar obstacles when we are want to collect uh, evidence to supporting the clinical widespread clinical use, which, as I mentioned earlier, up to now is is still not success. So I start from the orthodontist medicine, which is the. Uh, 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 we use the uh, Renansivir as an uh, example. In the very beginning, uh, Renansivir have been thought to be will be very effective in treating the uh, COVID nineteen patient. So it start from uh, conventional use. And when we are talking about conventional use, it's a one arm study and focus on only severe patient. So in the very beginning, it enrolled five fifteen three subjects and use to Renansivir to see whether it's in it is helpful to uh, treating this, this severe patient in their severe form. And from the results of the one study, it showed there will be a 68% uh, efficacy in, in treating this kind of, of patient. And this is the data. So this is all the data published in the uh, top journal of the conventional uh, of, 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 uh, medical field, medicine field. And they, they have the daily change of the status of disease status, and they evaluate whether the by making use of this kind of data, this kind of data, they evaluate whether is it possible to provide efficacy to in treating patient. But uh, this is because this is one arm study. So in the viewpoint of the uh, evidence based medicine, this the evidence level is not uh, high enough to support the widespread clinical use. So. The biostatistician, we are very eager to, provoke, to provide the world with evidence, so we apply, since it's a progressive disease. So if the treatment is really can help patient, then we can prevent the disease from progression. And further, we can promote the regression of the disease. So by, by making use of this uh, novel uh, method, we prove that the use of renal severe can, pro can prevent the COVID-19 deaths by 32%. And to uh, improve the odds of recovery and discharge by 36%. So this is we make use of the data from the one arm study. And from this study, we further evaluated that indeed there will be uh, the, the efficacy will depend on the state of the patient, the state, the severity of the patient. For the moderate for the patient in moderate disease, the use of renal severe will provide more prominent efficacy in recovery and discharge. And for the mild disease, the use of the drug will will prevent, provide more uh, efficacy in terms of COVID-19 deaths. 
So this this is echo the the previous uh, CA kept the conventional alternative medicine that the treatment should be depends on the severity of the patient. And following our our evidence later on the to one study from uh, American which showed is the very similar results. But for the death because this is the in interim report, so it's it is failed to provide evidence on uh, using on the evidence that using the Trendensivir could uh, imp could provide the efficacy of uh, re uh, reduced deaths. This is another uh, study in China which used the standard of the evidence-based medicine. It is a randomized control trial to one. But unfortunately, this study was terminated prematurely before it can reach the uh, predetermined sample size. And of course, it because of this, this study didn't complete yet, so it is also failed to provide evidence to uh, demonstrate the efficacy of this drug. And ironically, and the, the, uh, another, so the orthodontic medicine make use of these two studies. One is the interim report, and the other is the sub study, although they both are randomized control trial, but they try to integrate the uh, evidence and try to provide uh, clinical, su clinical suggestion in terms of guideline. And of course, uh, they fail to do it because it, one is the interim report and the other is the study didn't complete yet. And so again, we make we pro so uh, because we are want to provide evidence to the um, to facilitate the medical uh, the medical society to make use of more effective treatment to COVID nineteen patient. So we make use of the data from the uh, randomized control trial from America to show that the drug is indeed can provide efficacy in terms of the. Uh, uh, patient to improve the chance of the patient recovery and reduce the risk of the death both are significant. So this is the story of the also uh, also don't this medicine. So although they make use of the gold standard of the evidence medicine that is uh, to arm randomized control trial, but because of they unfailed to con consider the, the patient heterogeneity, that is the severity of the patient, and also to fail to uh, make use of data more efficiently. So up to now, the, the current evidence still fail to provide the uh, convincing uh, evidence on, to support the clinical use of this supposed to be effective drugs. So let's go back to the, the camp, the uh, representative of the uh, traditional medicine, it is quinine. The quinine have been used in the, uh, in, in the many clinical practice, including the immunotherapy, immunotherapy and also, uh, of course, the, for treating malaria. And also in the, in, the very, in the previous history of the medical treatment, quinine is also have uh, their role in the providing the uh, uh, treatment efficacy in different fields of the uh, diseases. So they are from the uh, mechanical base. It also can be effective in make, in using quinine to treating the uh, COVID nineteen patient. So not only in. Uh, in Asian country, but also in the Netherlands and also the Italy, they, in the very early stage, they also try to use screening because it's theoretically it can be help the COVID nineteen patients. So they did, if they issued the guideline on of early use of the screening, in preventing uh, the patient death and also to reduce the viral shading from the infected patient. But from the randomized control trial. The, they fail to demonstrate the efficacy. Actually, it's mainly because of the delayed use of the quinine. The average, uh, average time from the onset to the use of quinine is 15 days. So there they are, they are three groups. One is the quinine plus azithromycin, which is another antibiotics, and the other is quinone, and the other is control. Compare these three groups, they didn't provoke, they didn't fail to prove any benefit derived from quinine. And another study in the Wuhan in China, they, however, they showed the, some beneficial, the possible beneficial effect. So similarly, the, in the evidence, in the viewpoint of the evidence base, they, uh, 
uh, the scientific society do a meta-analysis, but as you can expect, one is uh, pro and the other is con. So in actually taking this evidence together, it's fail again, fail to to provide evidence that cleaning may bring benefit for COVID-19 patient. So this is another trial from the French, and they use a detailed study design, and they use the applied, provide the, the treatment to patient at very early stage. And in average, the time from the onset to the admission, administration of this drug is about four days. So compare with the with the other randomized control trials very early, in the very early stage. And moreover, it provides like the what we, we can obtain in the Renzivia, they provide a daily measurement of the viral loading for every the patient they enroll. So when we are talking about the efficacy, actually the, the change from the patient, they change their status from day to day. So if you use the conventional uh, method to do the analysis, that is, you use the, the, the point from the start and to the, the point from the, the de defined outcome, occurrence of the outcome, death or discharge, it will be a waste of the information. So if, it, if, we, can, if we can make use of the, the daily change like, pro uh, provided by this study, then it's possible to uh, illustrate the daily change from the, the positive uh, bioshading status to the negative bioshading status, and we can see the probability from the positive to negative, and also the negative to positive. Mm -hmm. And so we can, can make a better evaluation of the quinine. And we show that compared with the standard care, the use of the quinine uh, may provide the benefit of six times in decreasing the viral shading. And if you add the uh, additional mycin, it may be provide even larger. Uh, efficacy in reducing the viral shading. This is uh, correspond to the, the original uh, original uh, uh, results provided by the article, but we use uh, we provide the detailed uh, uh, analysis and in terms of the mechanism of the drug that may provide benefit to the community patient. So as, uh, I want to conclude that although uh, uh, randomized control trial in the current era of evidence medicine, in the past, this study design indeed provide the very valuable uh, information and support recognition which kind of treatment can provide benefit to patients. But if we stick on to the uh, classical study design without taking into account the personalized attribute and uh, which kind what we thought that the, the, the provision of the uh, different treatments according to the different disease severity and also the pay, uh, patient characteristic, it may be fail, even if the, the treatment may be effective, but we may fail to uh, identify this. And also, when we are talking about the conventional alternative medicine in terms of the evidence medicine view perspective, actually the orthodontist medicine and also the uh, conventional medicine are facing with the same challenges. and. Uh, in this field point, the randomized control trial may be another shackle to which may hamper our clinician and also statistician to provide the evidence to make find which patient will will suitable their, uh, to find the most suitable treatment for them. So this is uh, this is my uh, conclusion today. That is, uh, we should make better use of the uh, site design and also make a make a dedicated analysis of the available information to make uh, especially for promoting the uh, cheap based therapy to make a, to prove to prove its efficacy instead of stick, stick on to the uh, the basic principles of the randomized control trial okay thank you uh, so much, uh, the brilliant uh, the excellent talk uh, from dr xu I think uh, his talk uh, just very fit uh, uh, following uh, the talk from uh, Professor Lee, uh, just very fit uh, to uh, second objective strategy from WHO, uh, how we can provide uh, uh, the a good quality and uh, safety and effectiveness of the uh, CAM. Uh, 
uh, using the uh, uh, evidence-based approach. Okay, uh, because time limitation, uh, if you have some question, I recommend we can leave the question in the panel discussion. Uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you, Dr. Xu and Professor Chen. So our final, uh, final bit is uh, talking about uh, evaluation of the treatment efficiency. Um, GR with acupressure, tracking, and imprinting. And now we'll invite Professor Yan Lingfang to uh, check the section. Welcome, Professor Yan. Uh, thank you, everyone. And now we are going to uh, introduce the next speaker is uh, Dr. <coughs> Yu Jin Chen. Uh, Dr. Chen is a medical doctor. She was trained in Kaohsiung Medical University uh, with uh, mainstream medicine or uh, Western medicine. And uh, her specialized is uh, emergency medicine, also a great care medicine. Uh, we, we have known her for many years and we know her, uh, we know she loves to, to travel a lot. So uh, she she has been many countries and uh, uh, then she uh, adds her expertise of uh, travel medicine. And after the uh, medical training and the career of a medical doctor, uh, she uh, she studied a master of uh, public health, and also uh, she had her um, her MPH program with uh, Dr. Xie uh, to observe the, how the um, how the uh, practice of uh, uh, qi and also acupressure uh, combination with uh, copying to uh, treat uh, patients. So uh, today her topic of uh, evaluation of the treatment efficacy on, on bowel syndrome with uh, acupressure copying and sort of imprinting is uh, actually based on her uh, practicum uh, of uh, 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 MPA uh, program. So now we, uh, we welcome Dr. Chen. Thank you. Uh, good evening, uh, professors and everybody. Uh, I'm uh, Chen Yujin, uh, you can call me Kay. And uh, today, um, uh, in the beginning of this meeting, Dr. Xie already introduced the, uh, uh, the acupressure and the copying method. And now uh, I'm to, uh, uh, this study is also con conducted in Dr. Xie's uh, clinic. So uh, today we'll uh, talk about evaluating treatment efficacy of acupressure and cupping on gastroesophageal reflux disease, which we also call, uh, call the abbreviation GERF. Uh, nowadays, uh, GERD is recognized as the one of the most common uh, GI disorders that trigger visit to healthcare clinics. The prevalence in North America is uh, around 20%, but in East Asia, the prevalence is uh, ranging between 2.5% um, to, uh, to 7%. Though still uh, much lower uh, in East Asia, but the trend of uh, increasing prevalence is observed in both areas. And uh, we know that uh, Patient with GERD often has the symptoms of uh, epigastric pain and uh, abdominal fullness, and also AC regurgitation or burning sensation, such as these symptoms. And that made them feel very discomfort and uh, often go to the clinic for help. Uh, but uh, GERD is commonly diagnosed as chronic gastro disorder. And its characteristics uh, a repetitive recurrent, a recurrence which significantly impacts the quality of life. Though um, nowadays the first line treatment of GERD is the uh, medication PPI, but uh, sometimes we still consider about the surgery. But uh, mm, surgery, the surgery such as such as fundal life. Uh, fundal lactation is uh, not uh, is still 
invasive and also uh, has the complications such as dysphagia. Patient has to take the risk. So it's not, um, not very common nowadays. And uh, talking about the medication, the pharmaceutical management, the PPI, sometimes it's, it's effective, but, not so, but sometimes it's ineffective. And uh, when we use it for long term, uh, the research already revealed a lot of side effects nowadays. So uh, talking about uh, treatment of bird, change of lifestyle is considered the uh, fundamental and mandatory uh, treatment in treating GERD. However, it is often neglected by the treating clinician, uh, clinicians and the pa also the patients. Themselves. And um, PPI, proton pump inhibitor, is considered the most effective pharmaceutical treatment in treating GERD. Uh, due to its nature of suppressing gastric acid. Prior studies have shown uh, sometimes that it, uh, it can re uh, reduce the GERD symptoms about 50% to 80%. But however, uh, additional, sorry, however, additional uh, variables in life, such as compliance, medical compliance, may interfere with treating outcome. So make it difficult to reach the same level of improvement. And uh, we mentioned some side effects of PPI. Uh, as indicated by many research studies uh, over the past decade, long-term use of PPI may lead to uh, nutritional imbalance, especially vitamin B12 and magnesium deficiencies and also increase the risk of gastroenteritis, travelers' diarrhea, clostridium difficile colitis, and also, osteo and also will cause uh, osteoporosis and fracture, ischemic heart disease, chronic renal impairment, and also dementia. So we already know there are so many side effects of PPI, and uh, we so we still seek for uh, some treatment for GERD that is not invasive and safe and effective. So we turn our eyes to the uh, Chinese traditional med med uh, medicine. Uh, the unique qi blood balance theory of Chinese traditional medicine, uh, which uh, Dr. Xie already made already mentioned that qi is a visible body vital energy that enables appropriate physical function. And uh, the treatment of acupressure aims to manage qi via application of target pressure on the acupoints that correlates to the problematic organ through reflexology and the detection of body's qi distribution. This is from uh, Dr. Xie's book. And based on precise locating the appropriate acupoints, effective acupressure is applied to gather the damaged tissue and also impair qi circulation in the area to allow remove the qi and the waste from the region via pressure difference caused by the cupping. And cupping has an adjunctive therapy supplemental to acupressure promote remove the waste by increasing metabolism. No response. So next one. Yeah. So uh, we have a con uh, short conclusion that acupressure is a non-invasive treatment based on the theory of qi and acupoints, and it can be given repetitively in proper interval to treat GERD. The aim of this study is to uh, evaluate the treatment efficacy of acupressure and cupping on GERD. Next. Uh, my. Next. Eh? Previous. But there's no one. Well, no. This is a previous. Yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah. Oh, pointer. Yeah. This one. No, I'll be on next. Yeah. Be on next. Yeah. Okay. Turn on. Oh. Okay. 
and this is our uh, research design. Uh, uh, we include 158 patients, uh, participants, and uh, uh, this re uh, the conduct conducted time of this research is uh, September to October and 2018. And the place is in Dr. Xie's clinic, Jiding clinic. Okay. And we, uh, we used a, st a structured questionnaire to collect demographic, uh, demographic variables and the medical histories re related to GERD, include, including age, gender, date of birth, occupation, and the uh, history, GERD history symptoms, all these demographic variables. And uh, we use three acute points commonly uh, used in uh, uh, which will affect the human digestive function. Uh, one is Zhong Guan, it's CV12. Its uh, position is in the, it's on the abdomen, the middle epigastrium. And T3, it's in the back, above the third thoracic spine. And the T7, also in the back above the seventh thoracic spine. And uh, we collect data uh, first when enrollment is major one. Uh, during major one, we only give copying without acute pressure. And then uh, after copying, we take photo and evaluate the imprint. And uh, after one month, we uh, do the major two. In major two, we do acupressure, then cop they follow with copying, and then we get the imprint and take photos and get the major two. And uh, after six months from the major one, uh, we do the, treat uh, the third treatment. In the third treatment, we also give acupressure with copying and uh, then do the third time measure of the imprints. And, uh, okay. And the device we use for cupping is a special device. The cupping system of uh, uh, adjust, uh, sorry, adjustable immediate suction device. Which was uh, which is equipped with pressure measuring meter to monitor the negative pressure incurred during the cupping process to assure the e efficacy and safety. Uh, the picture shows here. We can see there's a meter here which can show the pressure, and this is the process they do the cupping. And. The a negative pressure is controlled based on the location in this study. Uh, you can, when CV12 is in the middle uh, epigastrium, the middle epigastrium in the abdomen, so it's a soft part of our body. So the pressure is a little bit lower between 200 and uh, 300 millimeter mercury. And about T3 and T7, because they're on the back, which is stronger. So the uh, pressure over T3 and T7 is between 400 and 620 millimeter mercury. Uh, but it also per, uh, person by person adjusted by age, body size, muscle mass, and general condition of the, of the person, of the participant. And duration of each cupping application is said to be 20 seconds. And result is measured by the color grade of post copying imprint to evaluate the severity of gastric functional abnormality. Uh, so we took photos just after uh, copying, take photos of the imprint. And then uh, it is evaluated by the doctor, doctors and uh, the assistants. The color grade by attending physician and therapy assistants, they will apply uh, them to five grades. Grade one and two, we can see the picture here. 
grade one and two imprints are defined as colorless or very light pink. And grade three here, uh, imprints are defined as light redness and four as an even dark redness. And grade five is the most severe one, which um, here, uh, strong dark and still particular, a blackish red or dark brown spots with uneven skin surface. So um, the, the higher the grade means the more severity of the GERD. Okay, so uh, higher grade indicates more severe. However, uh, the negative pressure applied to Zhongguan, the abdomen, the CV12, was lower, so fewer uh, grade four and five are identified. And uh, the statistical method of this research uh, is we compare the changes observed of the grade of post cupping imprints. And uh, the odds for the treated group can be calculated by the uh, off diagonal cell. Taking this, for example, the B B1 here, B1 here represents changing from mild in measure one to severe in measure two. And C1 means uh, severe in measure one to mild in measure two. And similar in right panel, but it's a uh, measure three versus measure two. And then we can uh, obtain the uh, ratio. Um, obtain the uh, odds ratio uh, by McNema test method, and also the absolute difference here. And here is our result. Uh, uh, we can observe in a cue point, uh, here, uh, this is table one, it's post copying imprint color grades, every acute point, uh, measure one, measure three. And we can observe in CV12, these acute points, there's very few uh, high grade uh, cases case here. And in uh, major one, we can observe between major one, major two, and major three, we can observe fewer severe cases in major one. Uh, we'll explain why. Let's maybe uh, we only do the cupping and not acupressure in major one. And uh, we also can observe that uh, there's more severe case in, in fact, in major two, and they will have a little bit uh, decrease in major three. And this is the uh, most important uh, result of our study. Uh, we can see, we can, uh, we can uh, see that uh, we can get the odds ratio here by the method we just mentioned. Uh, but uh, sometimes we use different cutoff points. And the uh, result here is um, the most significant one is uh, only in T7, the acupoint T7. We have the odds ratio here, point, sorry, okay, okay here. Odds ratio is 0.3. That means um, there's a reducing, a reduced the severity around 70% for the cutoff value three here in uh, acupoint T7. Uh, and uh, when you cut, uh, set the cut value to four, then the, what's my reason? Okay, now I can do it, okay. Um, it, it's in the bottom, so it's a little bit difficult. So uh, even we set the a cut point to four, then we will get a uh, more improvement in T7. Uh, uh, and we can observe in CV12. That ratio also means there's an improve in the severity over CV12 acute points. But uh, the 90% confidence interval shows there's no um, significant. So, uh, Okay, let's go to our discussion. 
Um, the study result indicates significant, uh, significant improvement in the uh, imprinting color grade after uh, applying both occupation cupping and the acupoint on T7. Uh, this is the most significant one. And um, over the CV12, uh, the effect is less significant. The, uh, and we can't observe the same therapeutic effect on T3 acupoint. This study. And um, Mm -hmm. oh, we just mentioned about uh, the uh, in major one, all the severity seems not so, uh, uh, seems uh, milder, milder in the uh, major one, uh, comparing with major two and major, uh, major three. That may be because uh, we only do cupping, not acupressure. And uh, the damaged tissue and circulatory waste need to uh, gather I need to gather to the acupoints by applying acupressure. So that's why the major one will be, uh, we see the result of major one is milder. And, um, okay. Uh, talking about, uh, because the uh, most significant uh, effect is over the T cell and uh, less significant effect on, uh, on CV12, but uh, how about T3? Why there's no uh, same effect over, uh, on T T3? That's be, uh, we, we think that's maybe because T3 uh, poses less anatomical relevance to the stomach, and it is recognized to many associated with autonomic nerve system functions, such as emotion. Also, autonomic fun we already know autonomic nerve system will affect the uh, motion of um, the digest um, digestive function and also motion of the GI tract, but uh, it may not be so specifically, not so specific to the stomach function. So that's why uh, it explains there's no uh, statistically significance. And uh, this causes two methodological advantage. First, uh, we use the adjustable immediate suction device. So we can uh, use a very, um, the, the, minimum, the minimal negative pressure, which is effective and safe. And uh, the... Uh, Okay. And uh, this standardized pressure approach also alleviated potential interoperator uh, reliability issue. So uh, that makes, um, although sometimes it's operated by the assistants, the cupping is still uh, in the same standard. And second, this, uh, despite this is not a randomized study, but uh, this meshed study design with follow-up was employed to measure and to compare treatment efficacy over a period of a few months. The meshed study design with follow-up approach is aimed to control possible clinical interference uh, caused by individual participants' unique characteristics to maximize statistical power. And so our conclusion is acupressure with cupping, uh, this treatment method uh, on, uh, on GERD uh, is effective and it has the, uh, is effective in reducing the severity. Mm, but we have to choose some um, appropriate acupoint. Thanks for listening. Okay, so uh, thank you very much for Dr. Chen's presentation. Uh, she, her, uh, her talk is uh, just, uh, uh, cor uh, just corresponding to the last point uh, uh, Dr. Xu mentioned about the study design, a good study design, then uh, we can uh, still use the um, uh, uh, scientific way to, uh, to present the 
uh, the evidence, the efficacy of uh, this uh, the CAM, the uh, alternative medicine uh, with uh, evidence. So uh, I think this is a very good study. So uh, we, uh, because uh, now we are connecting with the uh, panel discussion, so uh, shall we have all the questions together with everyone? Thank you, Dr. Chen and Professor. So now we are going to our panel discussion, and we will invite uh, Professor Chen, Dr. Xie, Professor Li, uh, Li Zhulan, Dr. Xu Chenyang, Dr. Chen Yujing, Professor uh, Chou Yuexia, Professor Chen Lishan, and Professor Ye to join this panel discussion. Uh, okay, before, uh, we may have a couple of questions, but before we uh, ask questions, can we can we ask the, the Bing Zhengxiang to, uh, to make some uh, a few uh, remarks about uh, our uh, meeting after the four lectures? Uh, Bing Zheng? Yes. Let me see. I need to... Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. yeah Very clearly. Yeah. Camera. Hi, hello. <laughs> yeah, after after being done, I I I will I I I will ask hello to say something as well. Yeah. So so you post. Uh, yeah. Just 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 uh, yeah. give a brief you know remark. Yeah. A few minutes of uh, response. Uh, a wonderful uh, presentations, all four, and I think they fit in uh, to uh, interact and enhance each other. I would like to uh, make four uh, very uh, brief remarks. First of all, um, we see that um, um, traditional Chinese medicine, or however you want to call it, or, uh, therapeutic approaches, you know, uh, could be uh, uh, under, uh, you know, presented, understood, and uh, used uh, from four different sets of uh, paralleled angles. Uh, one, uh, you know, uh, TRC could be under thought uh, in humanities, like uh, Professor Lee's uh, a very creative course had uh, demonstrated, which is very instrumental in um, uh, the teaching of humanities along Chinese philosophy or what have you. But it also, uh, you know, had clinical, clearly clinical uh, use and implications. So that's one pair, right? One pair, uh, you know, either in arts or in sciences uh, with gaps, potential gaps or discrepancies that need to have some bridging in terms of uh, academic languages and discursive discussions. The second pair would be either it could be uh, uh, you know, viewed as uh, complementary alternative medicine, or you know, as uh, extension or part of quote mainstream or conventional. That is, in the context of medicine, medical theories, and medical practices. Uh, you know, people could choose to be inclusive, or at least not exclusive. So that's the second set. The third set will be, uh, you know, in terms of teaching versus training that, you know, if we teach, you know, with a sort of a conceptual interest uh, um, for cultural studies, that would be one thing. If we're going to do this um, in um, operation rooms and in practices, um, that would be something else empirically used. That's the third pair. The, the fifth is that they are obviously generational uh, differences uh, as historians, we could see these are things evolving in time. That's my first set. It's like, you know, in these uh, paired up uh, paradigms or uh, academic occupational uh, uh, approaches, how do we make better connections and then bridge these uh, uh, parallel systems? My second uh, comment will be yes, we all want to be 
more uh, open-minded because we want uh, our knowledge to be useful. Historically, we are aware of these uh, phases for the, let's say, for convenience sake, the pre-modern period when traditional Chinese medicine, you know, was trying to push the, the Western or modern medicine out, right? And then by early Republican period, you know, uh, you see the wave turned and the Western medicine gained firmer and firmer ground and they were trying to push out traditional Chinese uh, medical practices, knowledges as, uh, you know, un unscientific and damaging. Now we have uh, the opportunity to revisit uh, this, uh, this uh, debate. Uh, and, uh, you know, we see that uh, all four of them, Zhou Yin and, uh, you know, uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Xie certainly, but also Basili, Dr. Xu, and Dr. Chan. They're all breaking grounds, and the, the precious thing is that they're all evidence-based. Uh, they break the new ground with their uh, innovation, with their creativity, but with convincing persuasive uh, persuasions, uh, not by advocating, but by showing the evidence. So, you know, I see that, you know, um, we are at a particular juncture of uh, revisiting and refashioning our understanding, our practice. I would also add my third point is that, you know, uh, with this uh, um, uh, uh, conference, uh, you know, we complete the circle with April, <laughs> June, with August, now in September. Um, I think if we just see it in one full circle, then definitely pandemic offer us a, a point of departure or a point of readdressing these things. You know, um, I, I, I see that Harold's here, uh, you know, interested in medicine and technology. And also we just recorded a, a very young PhD student in foreign languages and literature, Sylvia Chow, who is also there, uh, you know, she's trained in neurocognitive studies. You could see that for the younger generations, these uh, disciplinary grounds, whether within arts or across medicine, you know, various different kinds of medical systems, I, I would like to say that I hope to be optimistic uh, that you know, um, history is going to treat us kindly when we have a game changer. And if we would continue to be open minded, um, not not trying to be jealous and uh, overly uh, competitive, but we need Shukin and other people who are very, very innovative and uh, also effective in showing uh, how this works in education, in, in various different domains of medicine. Uh, you know, all of us owe these credits to Tony's amazing team that gave us these four uh, uh, different uh, 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 conversations and phases that are all completing, I believe, for me anyway, completing the circle of discursive uh, contribution. I'm very grateful, although it's very late at night. Thank you very much. Thank you. Then thank you very much for your uh, very valuable remark. I think yeah, you mentioned about the hub of uh, science, you know, and also the uh, <clears throat> the <clears throat> the uh, TCM medicine, you know. And I think this is a quite good, quite uh, quite correct. You know, we need the connection, you know, definitely between. The the uh, the cultural arts and uh, science and also medicine, you know, and this is one of the part we we try to push very hard to uh, ask uh, you know uh, people in the world to understand you know, how they need is to make use of the TCM. I mean, including the, the acupressure and also cupping theory uh, mentioned today, you know. So thank you so much and. Uh, I can I ask uh, hello to and also Kathleen. I have already uh, uh, seen both of you. Uh, uh, good morning. Yeah. Uh, can you can you make a brief remark? Yeah. 
Uh, hi, uh, good morning. Uh, hi. Thank you uh, for the invitation. Are you, are you in Chicago? Yes, yeah. we're in Chicago. Uh, yeah, we got up very early to uh, to join this conference, and it was really worthwhile. Appreciate it. Uh, yeah, yeah. For the presentations, I, I just have a couple of reflections, uh, things that uh, I was stimulated to think about uh, because of these uh, excellent presentations. Uh, one one concept that ran through all of them in different ways, approached in different ways, uh, was the uh, idea of efficacy, uh, or what can we expect uh, as the outcome of either uh, treatment by TCM or treatment by uh, Western medicine. And, and it seems to me that uh, that question is actually uh, a, a crucial question that points to uh, uh, many issues beyond just the immediate consequences of, of therapy, uh, because uh, it uh, suggests uh, what is it that uh, we're looking for? What is it that uh, uh, is an indicator of the, uh, the quality of life? Uh, I think uh, at one point uh, the contrast was made uh, by Richard between uh, people hoping to be free of disease uh, versus people hoping to have uh, a level of health uh, that was, uh, uh, you know, uh, indicated a, a greater kind of flourishing. Um, and, uh, you know, this, this contrast is very useful. It suggests uh, a very different notions uh, about uh, what health is. Uh, and uh, one of the benefits of the uh, uh, considerations of TCM and, and other traditional um, modalities of, of medicine is that we, we really have to think about that. Um, now, what interestingly enough came to mind uh, following from this uh, business of efficacy uh, had to do with uh, uh, kind of the question of uh, should we contrast TCM and uh, Western medicine as scientific and non scientific? Uh, I don't see any reason why we should say that uh, traditional Chinese medicine uh, is not scientific. I mean, it does not follow the methodologies of science sort of developed in the West in the 17th century, uh, that's for sure, but that is not the only way uh, that uh, one can, can think about science. Um, so uh, here's, here's the, the thing I would like to toss out in, in respect to that kind of issue. Um, the, uh, the sort of model for science that, uh, you know, descended from, uh, you know, the scientific and onological revolution of the 17th century, the Newtonian and Copernican revolution and so on, uh, came up with a certain view of, of a mechanistic universe and uh, difference between uh, substances which were living and non-living and a big puzzle came up. You know, how do we account for agency and activity uh, in uh, organisms, uh, since Newtonian uh, theory would say that the only way any action or movement takes place is because of some kind of impact from uh, an externality. Um, uh, so this kind of could be generalized into the question, you know, what does it mean to be alive? Uh, and uh, this very question was uh, put uh, in a very provocative short book uh, by the quantum physicist Erwin Schrodinger in 1944, uh, which uh, he entitled, What is Life? Uh, and uh, the uh, uh, thesis that uh, uh, he advances in, in this uh, uh, book, actually it was started out as uh, public lectures, um, uh, is that uh, the organism, uh, you know, is uh, uh, not like a Newtonian machine uh, that the organism is uh, not uh, subject uh, to the uh, uh, laws of thermodynamics. Uh, living means that you're not sort of on the, you know, uh, way to uh, entropy, uh, but rather it is a vitality based on an exchange with the environment. Uh, the <laughs> process is a renewing and a sustaining of life and a, uh, advancing forward of of the agency and motion of, of the uh, biological machine. 
And it just struck me that this is, you know, sort of the point of view of TCM. It's based very much on the exchange of chi, the uh, acquisition of chi, the uh, maintaining of energy balances, and so on and so forth. So, what I'm, I'm saying that I think that uh, the connections that people have sometimes made between TCM and, and quantum mechanical theories uh, are very strong and uh, uh, might be something that would be uh, useful uh, in the days of uh, COVID-19. Uh, we're living uh, in an exchange with other you know, living organisms. Uh, we're partnering with them, so to speak, uh, and to uh, somehow uh, enhance that relationship. So those were just a few thoughts I had. Anyway, thank you for inviting me. This has been very stimulating and interesting. And I thought the four papers complemented each other beautifully. So thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, you. Hello, thank you so much for your inspiring remark. I think, you know, it's very good. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, you want to pick up how, are you, how are you? Yeah, you want to, you want to say something? Yeah, but must, must be must be yeah. brief because because right now is a is is going to ten o'clock. <laughs> so Nick, my, just you say something? Yeah. Yeah, the two issues. See, first of all, I have a strong uh, a traditional Chinese medicine has been very effective. I have sure. had very good experience. One of the early ones I had with Bing Jen in uh, Taipei with the <laughs> traditional. But that, that brings up a big question is, I think the training of the practitioner is very complicated because it isn't just a, uh, isn't just learn things and memorize them and do them. It is really, you, you have to feel an intuitive and I'm just watching the first practitioner, the first speaker. I mean, it was with her body and mind and sense and everything that she worked. So that's an issue I see. The other issue I see is uh, just getting insurances to pay for it. Because here in the U.S. is all near, uh, sometimes prohibitive. If you have to out of pocket, always pay. And yet, I believe in supporting of uh, practitioners. Anyway, that's it for me. And thank you so much for this conference. It was worth getting sure, up. Sure, sure. I yeah I I, I I I totally agree with you. You know, you 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 know, chi chi based therapy and also TCM is quite something and very complicated. You know, we 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 have a long way to 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 pursue. You know, and anyway, I I think you know, uh, Tom uh, and doesn't allow us to to go too far. You know, but uh, finally, I will ask Joel, uh, uh, can you just spend one uh, one or two minutes to you know uh, to to make some concluding remark about this meeting? Then. Uh, Dr. Shi, maybe uh, one or uh, two minutes, and I will finalize the meeting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Jordan, you first, yeah, thank yeah. you. And uh, happy to see old friend uh, Harold <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and his wife. <laughs> okay. Now, I think, uh, well, today we, we listened to uh, uh, the sharing of some of the experts, for example, uh, Dr. Xie talking about the Qi, or, well, in fact, are quite. Uh, complicated and then uh, using scientific method to uh, to explain the existence of qi. In fact, uh, well, we we all know that the uh, the recent Nobel Prize on medicine by the Chinese professor Tu Yu Yu. In fact, she was using the scientific method to prove that the Chinese herb, in fact, is effective. Then, because of this uh, uh, scientific. Uh, 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 so-called discovery uh, from the Asian Chinese medical text, and then she got the Nobel Prize. In fact, the prize should be shared by Professor Tu together with the Asian Chinese physicians who discovered the herb. So I think that is something uh, interesting. Now, well, there are lots of complicated uh, discovery <laughs> and also techniques uh, involving uh, traditional Chinese medicine. But I think we have to bear in mind, in fact, at the very beginning of my class to my students, I told them uh, for uh, traditional Chinese medical knowledge, there are two basic principles you have to bear in mind. One is living in harmony with nature. The second principle is medicine and food are from the same origin in, in traditional Chinese medical knowledge. So if you keep in mind these two basic principles, 
I think your life will be different. Yep. So yep. that's what I want to make. So that's why my, my students, they find it very useful. And they want to learn something that can accompany them well, when they even grow old. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So, okay, Chi, you want to, yeah, make uh, some conclusion? Yeah, remark. Yeah. Uh, okay, I dedicate all my efforts in clinical achievement. So, I noticed uh, that's a lot of cat uh, in PCM. And because of the difference of person and difference of uh, treatment uh, methods, so it is somewhat uh, difficult to find out the standardized or scientific way to evaluate the uh, effect or difference among them. Uh, the current, uh, like uh, RCT or uh, uh, this kind of clinical trial, uh, I thought that may uh, fit the need of the TCM. So I think we, I personally think we may have to think about it to find a new way to evaluate TCM, uh, maybe by a separate item, se separate uh, treatment. And in group, it's really difficult to compare this one is better or worse than the others, especially uh, patient is uh, individualized and the uh, uh, treatment, the technique is also not standardized. If you are uh, if um, conducted by uh, the, the this, so I do very appreciate the, uh, all the uh, our uh, people here to study to watch the TCM and to uh, give a um, focus on this. But I think we do still need something sure. to make the uh, our TCM even better. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I, I, I for, for two. Sorry, I you know uh, because I'm you know limited, so I I will reserve you know a rent check next time. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I yeah I I I want to uh, make uh, some. Uh, uh, final remark of this online meeting. Uh, first of all, I think I appreciate, you know, uh, Li Zolan and then the Professor Li, actually, uh, he provide uh, the scope and also policy of the TCN, you know, in the world. It's so important, you know. And I think this is the uh, next, the important topic uh, in the global health as well. So I'm so appreciate. And actually, this is also related to life. And so the uh, Catherine uh, talking about, you know, the uh, how important uh, we should take care about the TCM, you know. And, you know, policy is important and uh, the, <clears throat> the scope is important, but uh, we need professional like Dr. Xie, you know. He devote herself, you know, for her life to connect science with the, you know, the TCM in terms of particular, which emphasize today on the acute pressure and the, and also, you know, the, uh, the, <clears throat> the cuppings. So I, I will ask, and if you have time to come to Taipei, I will suggest all come to, you know, her, uh, her uh, therapeutical, you know, office to look at the standardized, the, the cupping, you know, machine and the, how, how they how 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 they standardize you know their their SOP procedure for providing acupressures you know because to see is to believe so that's you know that's the one of the things I already enjoyed uh, uh, doing so so I I really appreciate you know she connect with the chi and uh, with the, also the practice of the TCM in terms of the science principles. And more, finally, the most important thing, you know, Professor Xiong, you know, you know, health humanities is one of the goal uh, he and the Louis and also, you know, and the other health in humanity, including uh, Li Zolan, we work together um, to work to um, 
to achieve the goal of the of uh, of reaching the healthy humanities. And I actually had a conversation with uh, Bing Zhen and also the uh, Liao Liao Xianghao Liao our our Liao Jiao So you know uh, he probably is online also as well. But you know we talking about what is important topical of uh, suggesting uh, the health humanities. I mean TCM is one of the best topicals because this is our Asian unique culture and also our unique you know the topical to connect the history, the cultural or arts and medicine and also science and also the now the new technology like the AI as well, you know, to uh, to uh, to become the, the, the important topical of the health humanities. Uh, next time uh, somewhere in uh, uh, in the United United in the ESCO you know meeting. So I I would suggest that you know this uh, this meeting uh, would uh, uh, would <coughs> keep going uh, to have uh, online meeting and also probably physical meeting someday in Taipei or in in uh, in Singapore or in 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 Hong Kong you know, somehow. So uh, forgive me because Tom is uh, is closing uh, to uh, the that evening in Taipei and uh, uh, I I would close this meeting. And thank you again so much for our colleague, you know, on, uh, which participant in, in online, you know, uh, in the way of the online. And I'm sorry I cannot allow you to ask question. And uh, again, uh, feel sorry, but uh, I think this is a very uh, worthwhile meeting, you know, to join with each other. So thank you so much. Yeah, group photo. Don't forget. Yeah, group photo. Uh, please. Uh, everyone, please turn turn on your camera. Kathleen, so nice to see you, huh? Hi, <laughs> right, Zhu Lan, thank you, huh? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Xiang Lao, thank you. Also, there's that Jia Yi, also attend. Hey, thank you, thank you. Sorry, I forgot to introduce you. Hey. Thank you. Okay, so, uh, okay, one, two, three, now. <laughs> okay. Thank you so Thank much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> See you next time. Yeah. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.